if you would have asked me 10 years ago, like, oh, are you an artist? I would have been like, no, I'm just creative. Like I'm, a, I'm more identify with being creative mm. than like an actual artist. Like I feel like there's gotta be a product, you know, if you're an artist. Um, and I never felt like, I always felt like a drive to be creative, but I never, I never necessarily identified myself as an artist. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of the Creative Truth Podcast. Today we're here, first episode in the new studio. I'm uh, here with my buddy, my landlord, Ryan Lawrence. <laughs> he's a uh, he's a serial entrepreneur, he's, he's a fine art uh, woodworker, he does contracting, he's the owner, co-owner of the stables with Sarah, who was on the show two weeks ago. If you haven't listened to that one, go check it out. And that was actually in my old studio. So if you're watching, you can see the uh, the difference. And this is a little bit of an upgrade. And uh, Ryan is from, we have a shared interest in skateboarding. And uh, we both have had some serious like back injuries that we're, mm-hmm. we're working through right now. Hence being laid down. Hence being laid down. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, so I guess like just to kick it off... The first question I typically ask my guests is, how has where you're from shaped the artist you are today? Wow. I once I once had somebody tell me um, when I was living in California to stop wearing a Yankees hat. Um, and when I asked him why, he was like, because you're too stuck on like the identity of where you're from. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Um, It's funny, uh, you know, I I don't, I think in subtle ways, you know, I I grew up in Jersey. I grew up on on the Jersey shore, um, which is a unique place already. You know, it's it's like all the stereotypes of New Jersey, um, but on the beach, you know, it it, it just was always like a unique place, you know. Um, We always felt like a little bit different from like the rest of Jersey, you know, where you had these like goombas and meatheads and, and we, it was always more of like a, you still had that on the Jersey Shore, but there was also like, you know, a strong like skateboarding community and kids surfed and, you know, it, there was always that vibe, like growing up, like hanging out on the beach. And so it was, it was like a unique part of New Jersey to grow up there. Um, and so as far as my art goes, man, I, uh, it, it was like a funny thing. Really, a lot of credit goes to Sarah. Um, at, at least with this, um, you know, this medium, like with the wood. Um, but, you know, I did construction my whole life. I've been building houses since I was a kid. And uh, and I was also always interested in art. You know, I would, I would draw a lot. Like I had my little like black books. I was really into graffiti and, and all that stuff. Was never any good at it. But, but I was interested in it, you know. And, uh, and so, you know, years and years and years of like, you know, perfecting the craft of really, it was just work for me, you know, it was, it was work, but because I was creative, I would always be able to, to build things in, in with a creative, like little tilt to it, you know? Um, and then about 10 years ago, uh, I don't even remember who it was. There was like an Instagram page or something like that. Sarah and I had just started dating and she showed me this page. And like, at that time I was like building like furniture and like cool like weird shelves and you know what i mean like building like cool stuff i was working for like a set design company in la uh, another one in new york um so i was doing like cool like art carpentry you you know what i mean but but like as far as my own stuff went and uh and so she had showed me something on instagram and uh it was like these wall hangings you know like stuff like this you know using like the old pallet wood but like using it as like a medium to to do like symmetrical shapes and all that stuff and i looked at it and i was like that's simple like i could totally do that you know what i mean like i looked at this like really cool piece and uh and so i started doing them you know i started doing these like symmetrical pieces and like early on um I would just do these massive, like really detailed, like hundreds of pieces of wood, you know, like, um, and, and you know, like just really involved that I was still kind of like figuring it out. Um, you know, and then from there kind of like refined it into like the more, um, 
I don't know what the right word is, smooth, like newer. I like to use like a lot of like newer hardwoods and I'll like, I'll fill, uh, I'll like use like pieces of like antique wood to like um, highlight or contrast, you know, like the other stuff. But I, I kind of went away from that, you know, really busy to getting more like a streamlined, like sexy, smooth, like look to the stuff I was doing. Um, so to answer your question, um, I don't, you know, it's, it's not like where I'm from per se, uh, but, but it's more my upbringing, you know, like constantly, um, being on job sites, working with wood, you know, building things like learn, like learn how to take a pile of wood and turn it into whatever, a house, a mini ramp, a fucking, you know, like whatever it is we're building, um, and, and, then, and then using that same wood that, that's been like a constant in my life as, as like a medium for art. It's limiting at times. Um, and, and I feel like that, that's why I do a lot of the signage with the, you know, words and stuff like that. Um, Cause I'm not a painter, you know, I feel like painters, uh, you could do anything, you know, <laughs> if you're good, if you're a painter, you can like, you know, just create anything or texture and all and i suppose it's the same thing with wood but you kind of you kind of teeter this line of like is this art or is it a craft you know what i mean and i never wanted to fall into like the arts and crafts thing so i feel like i kind of push myself to do like more difficult intricate type of stuff so i could stay in like the art what kind of stuff do you avoid doing I know one thing you mentioned was that you'll see some other people out there that the line starts to drift. Oh, yeah. And you said you'll tear it all out. and Yeah, yeah. Make well, sure. yeah, I mean, I would try to avoid making, uh, you know, imperfect work. You know, it, it's like one of those things where I, I, I say this all the time and some people say, oh, that's that's ridiculous, you, you know, whatever. But like, I think anybody could do it. You know, I think if you took your time, you know, and paid attention to detail like you could make one of the things that I make. It might take you a little bit of time to do it, but you know, that's, that, that, that's kind of my thing. And, and because of that, um, I like force myself to do things perfect. Like if, if there's lines and there's squares or there's a center line or it's a, a Chevron pattern or some like intricate thing, you know, like going around a letter, um, if it's off, I just, I redo it, you know, cause seeing those little gaps and seeing those little things, I can't live with it. You know what I mean? If I'm going to be able to sell this to somebody and they're going to hang it on their wall, like I need it to be perfect. Um, you know, as far as like trying to stay away from things, like th there are things that, that aren't as interesting to me, you know? And I know like <laughs> you have like the thing on your wall, but there's like a huge, there has been a trend for like the palette you know, Oh, we made this out of pallet wood. We made, you know what I mean? And, and so it becomes like a, it becomes more trendy and, uh, and, and it's cool. You know, like, I think there's, there's a line, like the, the trendy stuff sells a lot. You know what I mean? Every like year I always do like a Wu Tang piece and within like 10 minutes after I post it, it's sold just once a year, but I, but I just limit it to once a year because I don't want, you, don't you know, Wu Tang guy. I don't want to be the Wu Tang guy. And yeah. I love Wu Tang. I actually have a Wu Tang tattoo. I on saw my, Oh, you did. I thought I saw the, um, <laughs> the template out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up there. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, and it becomes one of those things. Um, you know, it's just like, uh, white girls in Wu Tang. You know, it's just like this trendy and like I grew up listening to that stuff. I mean, you know what I mean? I bought those records like when they came out at the record store, you know, in the early 90s as those things were coming out. So for me, it was cool, like growing up, you know, 35 minutes from Staten Island. You know what I mean? Not 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 to say that my upbringing was like the Wu-Tang Clan or anything like that. You know, I grew up in the suburbs, but, uh, you know, I, I, I love that stuff growing up. And so for me, it means something. But when you start to see like a Wu-Tang shirt being sold at Target, you're just like, uh oh, this, this turned into like some other pop, you know, and it is pop art, you know, and like me seeing a Thrasher shirt or like exactly. a Thrasher shirt. Right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. You don't skate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. You know, you like you walk down and you see like, um, like, you know, Scad Girls with like Black Flag shirts on and you're like name three songs <laughs> name three songs but I mean, you don't have to even name three songs i'm not good with song titles i forget song titles but still i don't it's just weird you know and it's cool it's awesome that like underground stuff has has become mainstream i, I guess it's cool 
uh, to some extent, you know, that people hear about it or, you know, um, but anyway, I, I try to limit myself on those things. I feel like I'm kind of taking advantage of the trend. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I, and it's the truth. If you go back through like my, my Instagram and all that stuff, it's literally like once a year. You know what I mean? It's maybe sometimes I'll do one like eight months later because somebody called me and asked me for one or something like that. But, um, so yeah, I try I try to keep it original. You know, like you, we were just talking about before, like, um, you know, just like doing my own unique. So I, I you know, like you seen the one downstairs, the the lust piece, you know, and it's like based after like Love Park, which you know what I mean goes back to like this. You know, and that that was a spot like back then with like case spot. yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, when like FDR and and that was like. You know, I was young and I was never really good at skateboarding, but, uh, you know, it was like a legendary thing. So to be able to take that, put my own little twist on it, but but yet it's inspired by, you know. Yeah, it's so. all, I mean, hip hop and music generally and fashion and skateboarding was all interwoven. And the East Coast yeah. thing definitely has like a different feel and vibe to the West Coast thing. For sure. In all those yeah. uh, platforms. Yeah. But um, who was like, uh, who was the one that first got you working with your hands? It was like your dad? Oh, like my dad for sure. Forcing yeah. you to, you know, hold the <laughs> yeah. find the flashlight or whatever. Yeah, of and, course, yeah. yeah, yeah. There is definitely that. But no, he he was um, he it, it was always it was always loving. It it was uh, you know, a thing that I could picture myself doing is like passing down this information, you know, to your boy. Um, so as kids, man, I remember me and my brother, it's crazy too. Downstairs in the bathroom, there's that little stool. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the green, Dude, yeah, green. that was the stool. That that stool was in my dad's shop 35, 40 years ago. Wow. I swear to God, I think he got it from uh, from actually my mother's like great aunt or something like that. Which Anyway, it's been in his shop as long as, I, you know, from every memory I have. And when he would sit us up on those things and he would hold up you know, a screwdriver. He'd be like, what's this? And me and my brother, we were kid, you know, four or five years old, maybe, you know, maybe a little bit older, six years old. And, uh, and, and that, and that's how we started learning about stuff is he would just teach us like, how we do this? Uh, you know, so he was a, um, like also a woodworker or contractor. Yeah, no, he, he actually worked in a steel mill. Okay. Um, for a long time, uh, 35 years, I think he worked in a steel mill, but yeah, he, he was, you know, he was a carpenter, um, always did side jobs, you know, um, you know, he, you know, he grew up in, in Jersey in the, you know, 60s, 70s. So, you know, he worked on and he wasn't like a, you know, an academic, you know, he was like a, a blue collar just worker, you know. And, Did he uh, dabble into like the art side of things at all? No, never. You know, it's crazy, man. I was just talking. So, you know, my mother and my father both passed o- over the last couple of years. Um, and so I sometimes have these moments where like I want to. I want to ask, I have a question about my family or something like that. And, uh, and my dad's sister, my aunt Janice, um, who's got five boys, you know, all right around my age. They're like a little lunatic gang of brothers. Um, but I'm real close with all those guys. And, uh, anyway, I I called, I called her a couple weeks ago and I, and I was talking to her and she actually told me that. So my, my great grandmother, so, my my dad's grandmother was like an artist was like a really good artist now i don't even know the whole deal i've never seen it i don't know what she painted if it was like land i don't know i have no idea and i asked my i asked my aunt janice what it was like what you know what type of painter but she didn't really know how to answer the question you know she was like i don't know i just know she was like a good painter who like showed at like galleries in new york and i'm like wow you know like my mother and my father, neither one of them are, are artistic at all. Not in music, um, art, nothing. Really, you know what I mean? Like, they're both big fans of music, but as far as like playing, you know, not, none of that stuff. Um, and it's something I've always been in. I mean, since I was a kid, I, I won an art contest in like the fourth grade. Uh, it was like a McDonald's art contest mm, in class, yeah. and I won like free McDonald's. Like just drawing and coloring. Yeah, it was a drawing. Con- I don't even remember what it was. I think we had to draw, whatever it was. You had to draw like a uh, hamburger. It wasn't even. <laughs> no, it was a little more. I, I think I drew like an eagle. Oh wow! It was like this. Um, I don't remember what what the theme was for it, but yeah, everybody put it in, and I remember it was like a surprise. My mom brought me to uh, to McDonald's one day. 
and she was trying to keep it a surprise but we got there and they were like announcing like the winner and i won and like my whole class got like free mcdonald's from it now i mean it was probably terrible but the point i'm trying to make is i was always into it you know what i mean i was always into art um so do you feel that it's genetic and that like is inherent to you well, yeah. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it. You know, I mean, it, it's something. If it's not, you know, genetics, it, it's definitely something that I I didn't choose it. You know what I mean? I mean, I chose to pursue it. Um, you know, but it but it's just something I've always been interested in. You know, it's just just creativity, just just weird. You know, bizarre, whatever, whether music or. You know, I guess even like skateboarding and surfing and stuff like that is still like this weird like expression, you know, and it was always like, like the weirdos did it. We're in the Olympics, yeah. but it definitely can be argued that we're not a sport. Yeah. So. For sure. Some yeah. Some view it that way, but. Yeah. Um, what, what, where were you in your life when you decided to leave Jersey? <laughs> I've always been in a place ready to leave Jersey. <laughs> no, you know, I got in a lot of trouble as a kid, man. Um, and as an adult. And, uh, you know, they, they, they call it like the geographic, um, like thinking that it, that if I change, you know, where I'm at, um, that like the, the troubles will stop, mm. you know? So at, at 18 years old, maybe I was nine, maybe I was about to be 19. Um, I moved to San Diego, you know, I, I went to, I was like, you know, doing drugs and whatnot. And I went to, a, um, a program like a like a like a drug program there and uh and when i went i just you know i booked a like a one-way ticket and i planned on it was in laguna beach and i went to this this program in laguna beach and when it was over i was just like well i'll figure it out you know and i had met some people and and ended up just staying out there and uh and and you know it didn't i, I didn't stay out there i think i might have made it six months or something like that um you know, but uh, there's like a saying, it's like, wherever I go, there I am. And uh, it was it was like the first of many. I think, honestly, the number came out to be like 13 times I moved from the East Coast to the West Coast, you know, um, which is crazy, you know, but it was like it started this whole thing of like, you know, I'll go, I would go, things would get tough. You know, I moved out to San Diego. Things got tough there. I moved back to Jersey, like. You know, things got bad there. I moved to Lake Tahoe. You know, I screwed up in Lake Tahoe. I moved back to Jersey. Things got bad in Jersey. I moved to New York. Then I went from New York to LA. And then from and then it was just back and forth from LA to Jersey for a long time. And it was like uh, you know, that that, that that that's a whole nother um, you know, a whole nother story I could spend hours telling you, but you know, I, I struggle with drug addiction for a lot of years, man, you know, and uh and a part of it, you know, I think that that's part of the artist thing too, right? It's just like, um, just weird desire to like, to, to push life, you know what I mean? And, uh, a part of me thinks cause I'm, I'm a Pisces also. And I don't, I don't enjoy, uh, I, I would rather live in like a make believe world, you know, R reality is a little too much for me, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, um, it's funny, man. I, I did a lot of time. I spent a lot of time running away for, from my problems. But but in the midst of all that, I, I got to see, you know, I got to grow up and I, I got to, and I don't even mean that like I grow, I grew up and matured, but I got to grow up and see life and live in LA. Right. And even like walk the streets of LA, you know what I mean? Like I've slept on Venice beach before and like woke up real early before the cops came and you don't mess with like, this was before you could just sleep wherever you want in California. Um, but, but you know what I mean? Like, so I, I got to see like really cool places and, and travel and I'm not traveling like, you know, a fancy sense where, but, but to go out there and meet people and see like, cause listen, man, a lot of my friends, like they, they grow up in Jersey and they never leave the neighborhood. Like that's it. They talk they, about it. Maybe they talk about it. I don't even think they talk about it. They don't even have a desire to go, which is cool. And a part of me is jealous of that. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's Content like contentment. Well, and it's just like this core just like group of friends that has never changed you know what i mean and there's a bond that i i mean i experience it with them like it, it's it's all love but i'm not part of that like you know what i mean there's like this thing because they never left 
So it's the same, you know what I mean? Like they're every summer, every weekend, every, you know what I mean? Like they're always together. And, and I, I guess, uh, I'm attracted to that too. You know what I mean? I'm attracted to that, like that, that tight bond. Pisces have the duality to them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. What do you think it means to be, I mean, the idea of the tortured artist comes up a lot and, you know, a lot of skateboarders, rock stars, whatever, they go one of two ways. They go down the, you know, the dark path and then they, uh, you know, end up not being professional skateboarders anymore or rock stars or whatever. And then, or they sober up and they like, you know, straighten up and then they end up, um, realizing that, Oh, I, I didn't need, you know, I didn't need alcohol or whatever to, to write or to express myself. But yeah. there is kind of this idea that artists need to <clears throat> self, uh, flagellate. flagellate. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. beat themselves up in order to express themselves creatively. Have you dealt with that at all or thought about that much? No, no. And I, you know, um, I, the, the, the categories, <clears throat> I'm going to start off by saying like the categories don't matter to me. You know, um, I've, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, like, Oh, are you an artist? I would have been like, no, I'm just creative. Like I'm a, I would more identify with being creative mm. than like an actual artist. Like I feel like there's gotta be a product. You know, if you're an artist, um, and I never felt like, I always felt like a drive to be creative, but I never, I never necessarily identified myself as an artist. Right. Um, after I started doing this stuff, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm like doing art show. Like I'm like literally showing at like, you know, not they're like whatever galleries, but you know what I mean? Like doing stuff in LA and, and I, and then constantly making art and shipping it out. And it was like, whether or not I want, like, that's what was happening. You know what I mean? Like I, I had a product, people were like responding to it, not in any crazy way, but like I'm making stuff on a regular basis out of my brain and people are buying it. You know what I mean? So it's like, like it just kind of became that, you know what I mean? And, and like you, you could see it. I mean, just in my day to day life, like I'm a construction where I'm a carpenter at heart it's what i've always been right is a builder and that too is, is is an art it's a trade it's a skill you know what i mean but you know the, like i feel like i've taken that to a level where, where i can look at it as that is my craft that's my that's my art you know whatever i'm doing you know I, like little little tiny details but adding that little thing in there you know to kind of set myself apart from other people um but so now I have these two things going on, right? Where I have this thing where I can I can make money and sell and do this thing that I love, like this expression, right? Where I can get in my wood shop, you know, collect a pile of some, you know, whatever wood and dream up this thing, um, or or whether it be a um, a commission piece, you know, if it's somebody sent me something that they want. Uh, my fucking back is killing me, bro. I gotta lay back down. <laughs> um, sorry. Are you good? It's fucking brutal. Uh, but so, so no, like I was definitely tortured, but it was my own, like I did that to myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, um, through like drug addiction, uh, created chaos in my yeah. life. You know what I mean? It, it's more that than anything else. Um, but, but associating those two things together, I, you know, I don't think so. No, I, I don't really identify with that. Mm. You know, so how did you get it? How did you make the transition from just being uh, a carpenter to actually having exhibitions and galleries and like what did the, like? And then you just woke up one day and you're like, oh, I guess I am an artist because people are buying this. Or, or yeah, are you? Or well, did you consciously go, I'm going to be an artist? No, now. no. You know, it's it's Sarah. Uh, shout out to Sarah Sandin. Um, the amazingly talented, you know, so, so Sarah is like literally an artist in every sense of the word, right? F music, singing, photography, fucking styling, painting. I mean, you like name it and, and sh she could do it. You know what I mean? And, uh, she's the tortured art. You know what I mean? Like that's who she is. She's just passionate, like, like lets it all out and like whatever she's doing, um, 
it's just just real you know what i mean she's just like just genuine uh like spirit of creativity right and so i'm i mean i'm, I'm just different maybe though maybe that's like my upbringing right it's like the jersey like some persona of being like i don't fucking care you know what i mean like whatever but um but Sa but sarah pushed me into it man because because i was doing construction we were living up in in uh northern california up in the up in the mountains in a, this little town called placerville and uh i was doing construction man, i was i was uh installing hardwood floors um for a while and then uh and it's funny too because i was installing hardwood floors and I was taking all the scraps, mm. right? So all hickory, um, you know, black walnut, uh, black cherry. Dude, if you look at a lot of my stuff, it those are the woods that are in them. Those are like, well, the, especially the the hickory and the walnut. Um, those are like two woods that I really fell in love with, like the contrast of those two. And if you, I still use them to this day. Like I literally ran out of that wood like a year ago. Like I seriously had so much, like every just drop from the, yeah every like sixteen inch cutoff of hard and it was solid hardwood. It wasn't no like engineered. It was solid raw hardwood that you'd have to sand, you know. And so I would just take all those pieces and, and that that's what I would make all my art out of was all that stuff. What would have where would the wood have gone if you didn't take it? In the garbage. Yeah, you know what I mean. It just would have went in the trash. And then so I did hardwood floors and then there was another crew that would always be on the job. So we were building these houses in, uh, in Truckee, California, like uh, up near like North Lake and uh, like North Lake Tahoe. And uh, it was this whole like resort, like, beautiful $3 million, like, you know, like a uh, vacation home, like really, really nice neighborhood. And we had the account for like, I don't know, 50 houses or some crazy thing like this. So we would literally just go from one house to the next. As soon as the painters were done painting, we would go and start doing the floors, right? And then as soon as I was about to be done with the floors, the trim guys would come in. And so the trim guys did all the trim on all the doors, all the window casing, all door casings, all that stuff at an alder, right? Which is like this, this like software, like a pine, a lot nicer, almost more like a poplar, mm -hmm. like in it's like, a, like the softness of it, but the color of it was like, it was a little bit nicer. And so, and then that was my other, so it was like those three woods <laughs> was like, and I just had so much of it, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm like doing, I'm, I'm working, I'm driving two hours and 20 minutes in each direction. Like, like, I'm not even kidding. I would go up over Donner Summit every morning on the way to work. Like my elevation change, I would go like 5,000 foot up then back down into the valley. Then, you know what I mean? Like it was such a crazy truck commute to work. And there was no, like I had to take all these crazy. Anyway, long story short, Sarah was just like, dude, why don't you just do your art? And I'm like, you're out of your fucking mind. You know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? Like, what am I just not going to go to work? You know, you're telling me I'm just going to account on like people buying this shit to make like, you're out of your mind. You know, <laughs> like my dad worked in a steel mill for like 40 years like that is not how i grew up i what you know what i mean like i need to get up go to work you know and then also me like you know being in recovery and and i, I have this like uh like i'm making an amends to to all the days i didn't fucking get up and go to work you know like i need I, like i need to go there it makes me feel whole interesting you know? yeah for for sure like there's like this uh, a trauma attached to that you know, a lot of years of just knowing that I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing, you know, and now I'm like sober and healthy and, you know, I'm ready to go and I want to get up and go to work. I want to contribute. I want to, you know what I mean? Like you don't get to do that stuff when you, when you're strung out and, you know, you don't have money to pay bills or, you know, so anyway, <clears throat> there was that going on too, but Sarah just put me she was really like, encouraged me to do it, man. She was like, <clears throat> your art's amazing. She's like, you could sell this stuff like full, you know? And so I had done a couple little, like, you know, little group shows and stuff in LA. Like we had a lot of friends in that, in that art world, like the street art world and stuff like that. So it was more just like friends and stuff that, you know, um, ran galleries would like let us show. Uh, but it was still like art shows on Melrose, like a bunch of, you know what I mean? Like everybody in the art world would come out to these little things. So I got to do a couple little ones like that. And then Sarah and I did an awesome show in, um, in Seattle. And uh, it was crazy. We, we, you know, the two of us together, like, man, I must have done 20 pieces 
15, 20 pieces. And they're like, you know, they're not like little, like they were like big. It, it was cool, man. It was an amazing experience. Like it was actually, a, um, I don't even want to shout out the dude whose place it was. Cause it, it whatever got, got weird with that guy. But, um, it was basically like, um, like, like not home goods. What What's the little high end spot right next to fancy Parker's? What's that place called? Yeah, it's a, it's a chain. I can't remember what yeah. it's called, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Lots of like, um, lighting fixture. Yeah. And- it was like a spot like that where it was like a home, but like really custom. Like it was like this stuff. You could buy this like peel and stick. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was like really cool. Anyway. So it was this showroom right on first street or first Avenue, like right next to the football stadium where the Seahawks play mm. it's first Avenue. Um, but it was this rad showroom, you know what I mean? Like all done up. Like, uh, anyway, Sarah and I go in there and we have like, not obviously it's two of us, but, but like just us, like we do just our work. And it was like, it was such a rad experience, man. Like see a bunch of people, can't, people, I don't know any of these people, you know, <laughs> I'm in, I'm in Seattle, you know, but it was a really good turnout. Um, it was just a really cool experience, you know, and I never like, like, I'm not like a gallery artist, you know, I, I never even really pushed to do that. It, it's, it's more like, uh, you know, the, the Instagram sell, sales and like doing stuff like that, which has been good to me, man. Like I've sold a good amount of work. Just the other day I posted that I one. I was that, like, yeah. I want to ship this out today. And then like an hour later, um, this dude in Canada, um, British Columbia bought it. Did you know him? No. No That's idea. So yeah, he sick. was like, dude, I've been following you for a long time. Like, I would love to have that. And I was like, hell yeah. Um, and they f- fucking sent it back. I sent it and it came back in the mail because the lady at the play, I was, I didn't put it, I didn't, the lady, I, she asked like, what's his last name? And I was like, I don't know his last name. She's like, oh, that's fine. And they sent it back because oh, there's no last name on the package. Like so. customs or something? Yeah. Probably because so. it was international. Yeah. So I got to, I got to redo that. Huh. But yeah, man, I mean, it's a, it's a great feeling, you know? Um, and it's funny too, because that, that piece, right? It was called, I like named it and then everything turned black. That's what I named the piece, right? And I was, I was making that. And so like, if you look at that one, um, like the center of it was like all different, you know, it's the stuff I do. Like, I think it was like walnut, hickory, and maybe mahogany. I might there might have been something like that in it. And it was all colorful and there was pieces coming out. And um and my mother died. Right? And so I had started this piece and it was on my workbench. And um I, you know, I, I can't I had come back like af- after like we handled everything with my mom. I remember it was just it sat on my workbench the whole time and I kept coming back and like messing with it, but I couldn't find like any like, I don't know. I just got to a certain point. Like nothing was, I wasn't feeling anything, you know, I was trying like different colors and, uh, it just wasn't working, you know? And I'm like, fuck dude. Like what? It was almost like something like died inside of me. You know what I mean? Like, and it did, you know, I lost my mother and, uh, which is just a crazy thing to go through. But so I just, I got a bunch of wood, like I like fit it all in there and just spray painted all the rest of it black. So it started off at like this colorful thing. And and, it, and it's like like a fully like symmetrical, like blooming out from the center. And then everything in the end is just like all black. You know, so so it's a trip to send something like that to British Columbia, to some person. That, you know what I mean? Do you tell them the story? Do you attach the story? <coughs> no, I didn't. I thought maybe it was too heavy. Maybe I should though. Um... So you'll start a project not knowing how it's going to look when it's finished? I almost never. I almost never know. Like very rarely. Like the the Lust piece, you know, the the like Love Park inspired one. Um that one I you know that one I did and and then like the other one downstairs, the the drugs one is from uh dang, what the hell is the name? It's a it's like one of those boutique hotels in um in Palm Springs. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but anyway, in, in the, in the lobby of this hotel, there's like an old marquee sign, like this old, you know, how like Palm Springs is all like mid century. What's this like old sign? And it just says drugs, on it, which is just like funny. You know what I mean? Cause 
it's, it's just like so people would always go and like take photos in front of it and shit and so sarah was telling me she was like yo you you should do one of your wood pieces but just has like drugs on it and so her and i actually collaborated on one of them and so the, the one downstairs has like that navajo like print behind it mm -hmm. but the one the original one i did um my boy this dude elliot out in la um elliot was like one of our, one of our friends out there and uh yeah, I posted that one. Like Sarah and I collabed on it. You know what I mean? She kind of did like the marquee design. Like she came up with like the design of it all, um, and then I just you know threw it down. And uh, Elliot scooped that one up, and so that that one's living in Los Angeles right now. But like yeah, so some of those uh, like if especially if it has like letters on it and stuff, I have I come up with like a little bit of an idea um, of what I'm gonna do. But the symmetrical ones, those like or even like the they're almost like abstract like some of them are wild like there's not even you know there's not even any symmetry to it or like you know like the asymmetrical ones where like you know the top right and bottom left are the same you know what i mean they're like opposing um but all all those ones like i know like the style that i'm gonna do but i just go with it you know what i mean and kind of let the let the wood talk and see you know i can't tell you how many times man I, i've glued and nailed like like a good amount of stuff and was like nope this ain't working you know and just and just rethink it you know um it's cool you know it's i mean i'm sure artists are the same way i mean how many times i seen sarah paint over a painting that i thought was rad you know and just just do something else man i you know it's that's a little bit tougher for me um there's a lot that goes into that you know what i mean you know uh, you know, uh, measuring it, making the cut, sanding all the edges, gluing it. And, you know, all my stuff's all back nailed. So I don't put any nails through the wood, you know? So everything I glue set and then I go underneath it. I can hang the piece off the workbench and then back nail everything. And so it's just, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot of work and it's not like, you know, it's not just like me sitting like you know, creating this thing with my, it's like a lot of shit going on, moving, you know, back and forth. Um, yeah, That's it's like cool. a puzzle that you're creating real sure. time. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, you, I'm building a puzzle. Like you know, yeah. When you um, so like you said that with the uh, you said then it all turned black, right? Yeah, and then it all with that one, black. you said you weren't like feeling it when you were thought you might be done with it. So when you finish a piece and you step back from it and you look at it, what do you? What's like? What's the goal? What do you want to feel? Or what do you? What's what's that kind of? What are you working at? You know, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know if you relate to this. Like, I, I could look at something and, and look at it and say, that's complete. Like, I look at that wall that I built a couple weeks ago, and there's no baseboard on the bottom. It makes me crazy. You know, <laughs> I know that wall's now complete. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. I, I have a sense of, like, this thing is done. It's, it's balanced. It looks good, you know, or it doesn't. You know, it's either aesthetic and I'm like I said, I'm not, I'm not a painter. I was never a graffiti artist. I'm not a music, but I know when those things look good and sound good. Sure. Right. Like I, you know, I, I feel like I have a good enough taste. And so like when it, when it comes to the wood, like I, I could look at it and be like, this is going to work or, or no way this is going to work, you know? And listen, I have a pile of stuff <laughs> that I've made where I'm like, oh God, this is awful. Like, this is just absolutely awful. You know, I started getting into, and this is me when I, when I start thinking I can paint something. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start like, so so a lot of stuff, I like when, when I use white, um, I just use like Rust-Oleum, you know, two-in-one, you know, primer paint, mm -hmm. spray paint. And, uh, and so I'll do that. And then I'll start getting into the weird shit where I want to drip other colored paints on those, which, and it looks rad. Like when Sarah does it, like Sarah used to paint like, you know, pieces of wood and then I would cut them down in the strips and then use that wood oh, cool. mixed in with my stuff. And it looks awesome when it, when she does it, but when I do it, it just looks like I'm trying to be an artist, you know, be a painter. And I'm, I'm just not good at that. And so I have like a bunch of them where I was like on this thing where I was trying to do that for a while. And they're literally all like stuffed behind the wall. Cause I'm like, this is awful. I'll never let anybody, I've never photographed it, you know, and that's, that's just part of it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I started doing some weird like um, crop circle type shit. Mm. You know, I got into this like weird little, um, you know, like, like it's funny, like geometrical stuff is like, you, you know, it's usually like 
all straight lines. But then I started getting into like using like radius turns, you know, so it was like straight, like all the wood is straight lines, right? But then in the midst of that, like I would use like, I would like cut out. So it would be like a circle of like black walnut pieces, right? But they're all going in the circle. And then on the outside of that circle was like a different species of wood, which is like really tricky to do because because now like, you know, when, when you're cutting something with a chop saw, those 45 degree cuts or 22 and a half degree, like that's easy. You set it on your saw and you chop it. But now, you know, I'm trying to keep these straight lines like, like where all like the wood slats are going. All that I want to be perfectly straight, but now I'm doing like radius cuts. So all that has to be cut on a scroll saw. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, it, it just made it like really tricky. And I got one of them that came out, came out fucking dope. I can't believe, I, I, I don't even, it's somewhere in there. I don't know where that thing's even at. Um, but yeah, like that one came out awesome, but it's just, you know, you try like this new thing and, and you get like, you know, I'm working on this thing for 15, 16 hours and then you get to it and you're like, yeah, this isn't working. <laughs> like this isn't going to look cool, you know, but, uh, but that's fun, you know, for like, it sucks. It sucks when it's work. You know what I mean? It, it sucks when like, I mean, you saw me today. I was out there. I had to, I had to build like a, um, like a hostess. Um, what the fuck's that even called? Host stand. Something like a that. Hostess stand. stand. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, they set cool. the menus and yeah, it came out, uh, like when, uh, the, the home, this, this dude clay, uh, shout out to clay. He's opening up a new restaurant called the haunt. It's like a vegan restaurant, but clay originally had, um, I partnered up with some people and opened up Fox and Fig, which was like another vegan restaurant in town. But that was four years ago, five years ago, four, something like that, four and a half years ago. And when, when he was opening up the restaurant, he contacted me, right? I had just moved here. Like I didn't really know a lot of people here. And, um, and so Clay, Clay and I and Sarah drove out to like Sylvania, Georgia to this old mercantile shop from like, the 1700s, like this old ass, like abandoned mercantile shop. And they let us take all this wood, like all like the, the wood planks and stuff from the floor and on the wall. So we like, we like salvaged all this material. Right. And we were going to, I was going to do the inside of Fox and Fig, right. Which I did all that, that woodwork in there. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. I did all that I stuff. I love it there. Yeah. It's really sweet. Yeah, yeah. I love that place. Um, but I did all that. But it, originally, we were going to do it with like old, antique, like legit. Like I I pried these boards off of the floor of this mercantile shop, you know? And uh, it just never worked out. Like the color scheme wasn't going to work. And when we just decided to go a completely different route, which was all that. That's all painted cypress. Mm. You write that like lavender, white. And there was like a pinkish color mixed in but every piece of wood was painted right so there was no like wood grain and so i had all this wood and clay was just like yo just hold on to it so come four you know four years later right and uh he's opening up this new shop and just today right i was down there and i'm like trying to build this thing and i go oh shit i think i still have that wood and so i found you know what i mean i found the wood like hooked it up, made, made this little thing. Yo, he was so happy, bro. Like he was about to, he was like, dude, I can't believe you use that wood. He's like, that means so much to me. He's like, he goes, I go to that place every year, like that old mercantile shop. He's like, I go out like mushroom hunting, like in those woods. Like he's like, bro, I can't believe you like remembered it and you used that wood. So it was just cool. You know, it was like a cool, like to, to do that. But you know, the point I was trying to make is like doing stuff like that like when I have to build a project is I like it and I'm good at it and like I'll make it fucking awesome and do those little details, you know, but that's way different. That's a way different experience than like me sitting in my shop, like trying to dream up the thing I'm going to make. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there's just so much freedom in that. And, uh, do you jot ideas down? Yes. I mean, sometimes, um, Dude, I just do them. I really honestly, like, yeah, I have definitely jot down, I, I've jotted down ideas. I've had this idea forever. Um, and it's funny because I'm, you know, I moved here and uh, that dude, Panhandle Slim, you know, he always writes like the, the little uh, quotes and phrases 
um, by, by different like celebrities and stuff like that. But forever I've had this idea of doing like, um, like a verse in, or, or even just like a line in a song. Right. Um, so like, I always wanted to do one that said like from the, from the old like Nas album where he says, I'm an addict for sneakers, 20s of Buddha and bitches with beepers. <laughs> like it's such a funny, you know what I mean? It's just such like a cool came off like that Illmatic album, which was just like, just game changer. You know what I mean? Like, like Nas is so good and has so many like witty, like slick, like lines. but I always wanted not like a famous line that people would know, but just some like weird, obscure, like it ne was never like a hook in a song, but just some like weird line that if like you're a Nas fan, you know, like, you know. You know exactly, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and so I actually have a whole notebook full of like those like verses, you mm -hmm. know, but, but from everything from like hip hop to like, I wanted to do like a whole show, right? So this is here, like the Jersey kick coming, like just Bruce Springsteen, like parts of Bruce Springsteen songs, you know? Um, so, so yeah, like stuff like that, I'll jot down. It's just, man, it's so time consuming. It would probably kill if you did a show. Up I there. would kill. It'd be so rad. <laughs> slope or something. Yeah. Yeah. It would be so rad. Um, but you know how, it, I mean, it's just, dude, it's so much time, man. You know, so, so like <laughs> you, you see downstairs, like I have the word drugs written on there. And man, even that is so time consuming, you know, cutting around. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at those, none of those letters are laid on top of the background. Like that background is cut around those letters. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's a lot of detail. And yeah, of course I, I could go drop it off. Um, you know, my buddy Mike's got a CNC machine and, uh, and I've, I've used it before. Like I've definitely, you know, dropped off pieces of plywood. He'll, he'll you know, do the CNC cut. Um, and then I'll go over it and then, you know, cut out stuff with like a router. But um I don't know, man. It's tough. Like that's that. That's what I was talking about before. Is like if I want to sell something as art, then I need to know that I did the work. You know what I mean? Not taking anything away from people. Do people do some crazy shit with CNC machines? That's amazing, you know. And and with that stuff, a lot of that's on like the the pre, you know, the pre production work where they're like figuring it out on the computer and coming up with these designs. Because I cannot do that. I am terrible at that end of it. Um, but yeah, man, it's just like, you know, though I have a lot of ideas. I have like full on ideas written down for like art shows, like solo exhibitions, like themed with all, like I have all types of stuff like jotted down for that. But um, that's more like the concept, uh, you know what I mean? Of like a, a, a whole show. But as far as like pieces go, even if I did all those hip hop lyrics or, you know, whatever, yeah, sure, the lyrics written down, but the wood behind it would, would still just be freestyled. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or maybe or maybe it would like play into the song, right? Like maybe it would play into um like play into the lyrics of the song or something like that. Um one thing Sarah and I talked a lot about is that she, I don't know if you did too, but she had studio space out in LA. And then when y'all came here, you noticed there was kind of a need for that. Yeah. Which is what led to the stables eventually. Yeah. Um, talk about like the LA art community and then kind of how that contrasts to Savannah. Yeah. Um, well, Sarah and I met through that community in Los Angeles. Um, you know, her, her being, I was more just like a little hood rat, little street graffiti kid. You know, we had like a, a little company, like a little streetwear company. Me and my, me and my buddy, me and two of my buddies like got together and started. What was that called? It was called Kills Billions. <clears throat> it was fun. With a Z? No, no, okay. no, no. no. That, <laughs> Kills Billions. In fact, the, the stable stickers that say the stable stays trill. That was it. Like, it's literally the same exact sticker, but it used to say kills billions stays trail. I don't even know what it was. Like, I don't even know why our sticker said that. <clears throat> but in LA, you know, in 2000, it was like 2011, 2012, like we would just, I mean, we slapped up stickers, but you couldn't drive anywhere. And that like, we would put up posters and stickers and, and we sold hats and it was a, so anyway, like I was part of the the, the art scene in, in that way. Like I was a little, you know what I mean? Like I would go up and put up posters at night and shit like that. But but I always go to all the art shows and stuff in LA. 
and it's just a crazy like thriving scene and it's like you know i i don't even know i don't even know all all the um uh what's it called like the different um like art arenas in la right so so like i was like but all like the little street art kids and you know which was like adjacent to like the graffiti artist, you know what I mean? Like then you had like the real deal graffiti artists who don't do gallery shows, but uh, you know what I mean? Like, so all those things are kind of right next to each other. And then it goes into like the fine art people who are doing like major gallery shows and then like the high, like snooty, you know, whatever. So we were definitely part of like the, there was a spot called lab art and it mm -hmm. was like the, it was like a street art gallery. Um, and it was cool. It was super fun. There was always like lots of fun shows there um so is a gallery was downtown it was like a really cool one uh the seventh letter um opened up their like uh flagship store right on right on fairfax and then across the way was like known gallery right and so it was just like dude there was just like crazy shows there you know what i mean like all those dudes from like all the msk guys would do their like you know art shows at at I think it was that seventh letter they did a crazy one and then across the street at known gallery it was just like huge shows so like in that whole thing like the fairfax melrose like art scene like you know it's a small world like when you get into those little things it's, yeah. it's a small world sure. you know and um i ended up meeting sarah I, I ended up meeting sarah through another artist this girl named annie priest um shout out to annie i think she's doing good you know she's she's like me you know she, she's been like you know struggling with you know acting like a lunatic out there but uh annie's amazing artist and uh and so sarah right being like this beautiful amazing artist and then annie they they were friends like they they would talk on on like instagram and stuff like that and then they ended up like like getting together one time and and that's how i met sarah was through she came over to hang out with annie and that's how i ended up meeting her um but you know you live there so I, I grew up living like outside of new york you know and started going to shows like you know when i was younger out in new york and and then moved to la and it's just crazy art scenes where like everybody is you know what i mean it's like it's just this thriving scene out there, right? And I just thought that that's just what it was, mm -hmm. you know? And then, you know, before we moved here, we moved up to Placerville, California. <laughs> this little, like, mountain town in the middle of nowhere. And it was amazing, right? It was this beautiful, like, amazing spot that, that we lived. Um, but there was no culture. There was no, like, you know, there was no art shows. There was no music. You know, you could drive to, like, San Francisco, but it was, like, a three-hour drive, you know? Um and so, yes. Yeah, so, so anyway, then, then when we moved here, you know, so, so now you got like this city where there's people around, right? There's an art school. You got tons of like tourists and people walking there. And like, it's, it seemed like it was trying, you know what I mean? Like, like it just, it just wasn't quite, it's still not quite there yet. You know what I mean? But it's cool. It's like moving in the right direction. Um, and so, yeah, when Sarah and I were here, we just, you know, we both needed studios, um, I needed a wood shop, you know, and, and you see the type of stuff Sarah does. Like you can't just put her in like a little room to paint on a wall. Like she needs, you know, to spread out. And, and so we kind of bounced around we had a spot at, uh, at, um, the Southern pine over on, mm -hmm. on 35th and broad. Mm -hmm. Um, Ramsey like was one of the first people we met when we came out here and uh, he put us up there, but, and it was cool. That, that place is amazing, but it was just like, you know what I mean? Like they had their own thing going on. And, and then we ended up um, sharing a spot uh, with this girl Ridley. And that was like off president street. It was like a warehouse, you know? And so she just had the front or she had the back and, and Sarah and I split the front. Um, and that, that place was cool actually. I mean, I really liked it over there. Um, and then one day they came in, we had heard that they were talking about selling it. And we had told them like, hey, if you're going to sell it, like, let us know, like, we might be interested in buying it. And the landlord came back like a, you know, a couple of weeks later and was like, you have to have your shit out of here in 60 days, like the building sold. And it's actually a second harvest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Har that, yep. That's where the building is. Yep. Um, so, mm. you know, Sarah and I were just talking and uh, I don't know, man, like, you, you know, I'm learning today. I'm learning now that like, I like Savannah. 
I, I appreciate Savannah because it's not New York and LA. I'm learning that now, right? But I'm definitely guilty of being like the guy that comes in and be like, oh, what the fuck? There's no fucking pizza here. Fucking avocado. It's a you know, real problem though. It, it is a problem. <laughs> when I go home, I eat so much pizza. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Like you, you want to come to a place and appreciate it for what it is right. and not try to turn it into the place that you just left, right? I'm starting, I'm starting to like, I'm starting to try to catch myself do that stuff. But anyway, you know, there was, there was like no, there was nothing like this in Savannah. And that's just it. You know what I mean? There was other galleries uh, or other studios, I should say, but, but nothing like this. And, um, I've been trying to get Sarah to, to do it, you know? And, and she's the, um, she's like the, uh, the rational one in our relationship where she's like, all right, well, let's hold off. Like, let's think about it for a second, you know? And then if it makes sense and like, let's go ahead and do it. And, uh, and so, yeah, man, we, we left that space. We had, you know, I got all this shit, all this wood, all my tools, saws. She's got fucking painted. You know what I mean? We had like a lot of stuff to move. And, uh, and we didn't even know where, where we were going to move it to. And we were driving, we were driving down around looking for a studio and we saw like a little handwritten sign like stuck in the ground and it said warehouse for rent and we called the number and uh it was w it was when it snowed out remember when it snowed out it was right before i moved here dude that was the that was we when we came here to look at this place for the first time january of 18th there was snow all over the place it was fucking wild bro in fact <clears throat> one of the hoses outside had cracked and there was water shooting out and it was all frozen and because there was snow out there we couldn't find the water shut off. Mm. I don't remember that, but I don't know why I remember that. But um, <clears throat> so yeah, we um, we came in here and we looked at it, and, and it was empty, right? It was empty, like none of this. Was, <laughs> like, we're just, you know, it was just an empty warehouse, and uh, you know, the front little office area, that that little tiny corner up there was there, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, I literally like just drew it down. I drew it like I, I did a, like a scale drawing on graph paper, you know, hundred foot, a hundred foot by 50 foot. And then I just like sectioned it off into little spaces, right? Some of them were bigger than other, you know what I mean? But just like sectioned it off and I showed Sarah and I was like, what do you think? And she was like, fuck it, let's do it, you know? And boom, we just started building. I started framing up walls, standing them up. I think, I think we had our first tenant move in like four weeks after we got the keys to this place. I mean, it was fucking done, bro. In like four weeks, we had to put all the walls up, all the doors, windows, lights, all the ply, like everything was just, we just blasted through it. Up here, this was just, well, this was all wide open. That right there, there was no walls up. Like we had built the second, we had built the second story. As like a, as a loft. As a loft, but it was just like, we knew eventually we were gonna do something up here, but for now we are just like, we just need to fucking get it done. Um, yeah, man. So, so I guess like you can't compare those two, right? You, you just can't. Our hope, right, is that by the stables being here, right? Because because Sarah and I both, she, her way more than me, but she she like was an artist in L.A. Like legit, you know what I mean? Like was a musician in L.A. Like was a model and like she did it. Like went to L.A. did it like made it, you know, in whatever extent of the word, like she was successful and then we decided to move here, right? So what you have in LA, what you have in Savannah is people who just graduated SCAD and they want to move to LA. So it's really funny because we're coming here like, yo, save yourself the trouble. No, I'm not, it's nothing again. I love LA. It's an amazing experience. Like everybody should go out there, get like chewed up and spit out or, <laughs> or make it. Right. But probably get chewed up and spit out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or just like, you know, struggle to pay your rent for the rest of your life. Because you know, that's basically what it is. Like you're just going to struggle and work as much as you can to like never, ever own anything in L.A. You know what I'm saying? But you'll also be able to go like to the coolest punk rock shows and like see celebrities at skate parks. and You know what I mean? Like you'll be able to do all that also. But like. You know, so for us, it was like Savannah's rad because you don't have to struggle here. 
right? You, you could come here and like make shit happen and go on vacation. Like we leave every year for like a month and go on a road trip. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just can't do that if you live in LA. It's, it's life is just too expensive. Somebody wants to steal your job. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's a lot harder to do that out there. And so what, what we hope is that by the stables being here, that, you know, when people move to, to Savannah or they're thinking about moving to Savannah, um, from a place like that, that they know that they have a home they can land in here, you know, to have a studio and to be able to have like a place where they could do their thing, you know, do their craft or their art or whatever it is they do. Um, and I don't know if it's rented yet, but my old spot downstairs yeah. is now is vacant. So. Holler. <laughs> and um, how we've been showing it, but we'll see. What? Uh, you have a, uh, they invented a phone. This is like kind of a, weird one but i'm I'm working i'm trying to work this question out but they invented a phone that you can make one call back in time and you can leave yourself a 60 second voicemail and then that's oh, it shit. so you can't talk to yourself but what would you say if you could talk to your 17 year old self it's so simple it's gnarly but it's so simple dude don't do heroin bro <laughs> don't fucking do it you know hands down like I, I mean you know like i said we we never got it that's like a whole thing i could talk to you for hours about that and the the craziness of but i mean man i could have saved myself a lot of trouble you know really i i mean don't do drugs seems so stupid and i'm like educated enough on like drug addiction to understand that it's not that simple but i don't know if i could have I, you know i don't know if there's anything that anybody, including myself, right, could have said to me that would have changed me, that would have, like, made me not do anything. You know what I mean? Like, I'm that guy. You know what I mean? I have to, like, I have to find out for myself. Like, I'm stubborn and (laughs) hard-headed. Fuck you, older self. Yeah, fuck you, older self. Like, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to see how it goes. You're an idiot. I'm not going to fucking get caught. (laughs) You don't know. <laughs> you just didn't know how to do it because you're, you know, I don't, you know, listen, man, I, I tell you, like I say this all the time. I'm, I don't have regrets. Um, there's things that happen and I feel terrible about the people that I hurt. Um, I feel terrible about the people that I hurt and, and I, I wish that those people didn't hurt. But as far as the word regret goes, like I don't really regret things, man. There's one thing in this world I regret. Um, and it's, um, when my dad died, he, uh, he had cancer and he was in the hospital and, and, and we thought he was like fighting. We thought he was probably going to beat it. At least I did, you know? And, uh, and, he, and my dad died in a hospital by himself, you know? And it's literally my one and only regret. If I could fucking go back, I'd have went down there, snatched his ass up and like took me, him and my brother on like a road trip. You know what I mean? Just like drove across the country and just got to go see shit. Um, and really, that that's the one thing that where I like, I think back and I'm like, fuck, I fucked that up, man. You know what I mean? Like I should have, and I, there's no way I could have known, you know, but that's like the one regret that I have. Mm. Um, yeah, I won't, I wouldn't listen to the message, even if I did call. Um, so the nice part is I know where to find you. So if we uh, if we do want to go down that path sometime, we can t- you know do another whole episode on yeah. specifically addiction and like I've talked yeah. about in past episodes. You know I, I'm not sober, but I uh, have had like struggles in the past with depression yeah. and everything else. So it's definitely something we could talk more about. If the listeners have specific questions for Ryan um, about you know his career, his past, or whatever, you can. Uh, you can email me at wecreatetruth at gmail.com. You can drop it as a comment, and uh, then we could do a follow-up episode. So, uh, in the meantime, how can people learn more about American Pegasus, you, what you do? Um, basically, now's your chance to plug whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, American Pegasus um, on Instagram, and... Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the only time, that's the only place I really push anything, you know, as far as like, uh, 
inquiries go and stuff like you know like i said i'm mostly doing construction in a perfect world i would be building decks and pergolas and that's it you know and, and being able to get creative doing those types of things but unfortunately you know there's a lot of tearing out floors and ripping out sheetrock and stuff like that which isn't super fun but um yeah I, i'm not you could uh, reach me at american american pegasus carpentry at gmail um and that's it come down to the stables uh I'm sure this fall we're going to have some events coming up. Um, it's just too hot right now to do those events outdoors. Um, but yeah, come down to the stables. Come pop in. Come say hi through the garage door. <laughs> I'm usually out there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Cool, man. Yeah, appreciate you coming on. Thank you, bro. Um, in upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you have questions, feedback, guest suggestions, you can email me at wecreatetruth at gmail.com. If you're listening on iTunes, please give me a good review. If you're watching on YouTube, you know, like, share, subscribe, whatever they tell you to do on YouTube, ring the bell, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can get merch and learn more at creative-truth.com. And we just hit, uh, we're in the new studio. We just hit a thousand downloads, uh, more to come can't do it without my listeners uh my guests my awesome guests my editor hayes and uh and raz for helping me co-found the creative truth what up, raz? and uh yeah so thanks for listening and we'll see you in the next episode <laughs>